Spiffy Guy and we're back for another adventure. It is uh, June 5th and we are headed into the bush out here at Miramac State Park. We're going to be heading on the uh, Wilderness Trail which is uh, an eight and a half mile loop and it has eight backpacking camps and uh, it's going to be nice. I've never done this trail before and uh, it should be interesting there is uh, probably going to be very very sloppy conditions we had uh, some heavy thunderstorms this morning actually and uh, they passed but we're we got 30 percent chance for the rest of the day but we'll see what's going on tomorrow is national trails day june 6th and uh, we've got some more fun stuff going. We're going to see if we can't hit a couple different state parks in the same day. They've got a, a little register kiosk just quickly on the way in. It's important that you guys do that so that way the park people one know who's coming and using the facilities so it helps them get grant money but also uh, that way if you do get lost they kind of know you know where your car is and uh, what to expect um, I expect to get fully rained on uh, by the trees once the wind blows they're gonna drop a lot of water I wore my um, my rail riders eco mesh pants trying them out this is the second long hike I've had with them and they're not too bad uh, I posted up on my Facebook that I had purchased a pair and they didn't really fit. So I went a size up and uh, I don't know, they might be a little bit too long in the crotch area, but we'll see. I wore uh, my boots though with my heavy gaiters because I fully expect to be dirt hay by the end of the day. This is supposed to be a pretty rugged trail. They suggest uh, eight and a half hours for the eight and a half miles. There's gonna be a lot of rocks, I think. And uh, should be good. Might see some caves. There is uh, 40 caves on the uh, property itself. There's a little pond back in there. Kind of nice. Looks like it might be man-made. But these rocks are awesome. This is kind of what we look for down here. They're, uh, they're quite beautiful. All right, so we've come in just a little bit. This is backpacker camp number one. We'll go check that out. There's a little creek here that you cross. So the, this one looks pretty close to uh, water. You can see that the trail is very overgrown. You could definitely use a good mow in here. I'm getting kind of wet from all the rain on the leaves. But so far it's a pretty easy trail to follow. And this camp is not that far in. So if you were looking for sort of a first time camping experience, this may not be too bad of a place, although definitely treat your clothes because it is tight. Here we go. What have we got? We got a little squirrel, chipmunk, mouse, something going down there. We got a firebox. That's about it. A couple spots for tents. Maybe a hammock right there. But other than that, not too big. There is, uh, like I said, there's eight campsites along the trail. And here's your little creek for water. Being that the creek is this close to a campsite, I would definitely make sure to treat your water because who knows who's going off in that direction and pooping. So there you go, backpacker number one. Let's head back and keep on rolling.
All right, here we go. So spot number two, these kind of come fast and furious on the trail, which is good. Um, you know, it's an eight mile trail. Some people can't hike eight miles. So it's nice to have these little pullouts. This one seems to have a little bit more room, more sections for a tent. You know, a couple options for hammocks, two fire pits, one, one uh, you know, fire ring over there and then man made here. Not too bad, and it is a little ways off the trail, which is kind of nice, actually. You know, so you can kind of camp and, and not be disturbed by folks hiking. I'll tell you what, though, it is going to be a moist day. Um, I'm pretty much soaked already, uh, mainly from the trees. I wanted to show you this creek down here. And, uh, you know, the pants are wet. The shirt is wet. Um, Taking a beating. This is definitely a wilderness trail. They do not have too much um, in the way of uh, clearing the trail. It's not hard to follow, um, but it's definitely low hanging. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is kind of mist coming off the uh, the creek here. It it was really misty this morning driving down. Uh, the temps were in the 60s and uh, the humidity is going to be very high today like 80 90 percent so no no good it's going to be a moist one that is very cool though this is a sycamore big old root system for a sycamore that's not really even that big comparatively it's very cool we're moving i don't know if you guys can read that sign from here but it says uh so the cave is closed temporarily. So right down there, it's just a tiny cave. And most of the caves are probably gonna be closed because of the, uh, the white nose syndrome that's affecting all the bats. They wanna keep people out of the, uh, out of the caves to uh, help protect those bats. And here's a hiking tip for you. If you go early in the morning, Bring a friend and make him go first. He'll collect all the spider webs. <laughs> there is a uh traffic jam on the trail here. Give you an idea of what we found. I believe this is a uh, box turtle. I want to say it's an eastern box turtle. I'd have to look it up, but he's a box turtle because he's got that hinged front that allows him to close his face off. Very neat. You'll see these guys in the springtime a lot dead on the side of the road because they're um, they're crossing, looking for new mating areas and things like that, so be careful. And if you see them on the road and, and you can stop, move them off to the side. It's very pretty on a shell. Very cool markings. But I suspect there's a bunch of them out here being this close to this little creek bed here. And everything is wet, including me. Oh my, the humidity is going up. All right, this is the uh, the 185 spur. You're gonna cross over that, bring you in here. Just take a look. You can see the split down there in the lower uh, corner. And then, uh, so we're right here. So we'll continue to follow this up and then we'll hit backpack camp three and four. It looks like most of the backpack camps are right along a creek line. You can see, uh, looks like a creek comes off here it just kind of follows it all the way around. So that kind of works out. Um, you can print this map off the uh, Miramac uh, State Park website. So it's pretty useful. Uh, so far the terrain has been fairly flat. Uh, there's been a little bit ups and downs, but not really too much uh, as far as rugged hills. Um, some of the terrain though is a, is a little slippery, you know, a little rock based and definitely overgrown. With the humidity that I got going on, it's very much like hiking in the jungle, I suspect. I haven't done it, but 
I, uh, I suspect it's pretty much the same. So we're gonna cross over there. Uh, the trail is well marked. Lots of good orange blazes so you won't get lost. And uh, deep furrowed tread in the middle of a sea of green uh, if you come during the, uh, the summer months. So we're gonna keep cruising. It's a beautiful day. Lots of moisture, lots of humidity. Hopefully the, uh, the lens isn't too, uh, too clouded. Baby turtles too. Oh, isn't he cute? You can hear the airplanes out of Fort Leonard Wood. I think that's where they come out of. It's beautiful back in here. You really can't go two steps though without seeing some sort of crazy wildlife. Here is a uh, nice little daddy long legs. And here is a, a little snake. He's eating something. He's got a mouth full of something. He's really tiny though. Very cool stuff. You know, definitely allot yourself some time because uh, this is a pretty cool trail. Okay, there was a bunch of hardwoods in there and now it's uh, moved into these pines. I think these are the, uh, the short leaf pine, which I believe is the only native pine tree to Missouri or at least one of very few, I can't remember. Anyway, this is the number two connector. So you can see where we're at right here. So we came up, we crossed over the 185 and now we're at the split. You could take this across and then cut short. Uh, if you continue up though, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five backpacking campsites and we'll keep cruising that way and check them out. But you can see that we've kind of moved up away from the uh, the creek area and it's really opened up uh, it's a very nice trail now um, not too crowded with undergrowth it looks like this area may have had a uh, prescribed burn a little while ago because it's not dense at all so definitely liking it glad i wore the boots though with the rain that we had last night um you know and everything being wet the boots are keeping my feet dry my uh, trail runners would have been soaked through uh, right right now and then uh, the gators you know using tall gators I can't recommend that enough especially here which is another reason why I wanted to wear my boots it's because my tall gators don't really go with my trail runners very well so but we're just keeping an eye out for more wildlife no bears yet we may or may not see them I'm gonna say no, but you know, one can hope that we might see one. The Missouri black bear is uh, it's making a comeback. The uh, Department of Conservation has put a lot of work into bringing them back. You don't really see them north of Interstate 44 though. But once you start heading south, which we're just south of 44, then you uh, run into the ranges that they're living. An interesting fact is, you know, one of the 40 caves that's on the uh, Miramac property is Fisher Cave. And Fisher Cave is uh, pretty nice. They give tours. I believe it's 10 bucks for an adult. And they've got, you know, real nice stalactites, stalagmites, that sort of thing. But back in the 30s, when uh, things were getting rolling around here in Miramac, see the uh, conservation, Civilian Conservation Corps came in in 33 and they started building up the trail and all that they uh they had bears around here and in fact uh sheep cave which we'll go maybe see after this if it's open is uh is one of the places where they housed bears and uh a guy by the name of eddie miller was in charge back then in 33 and he had a bear get into Fisher Cave. And so he locked the bear into, into Fisher Cave because he thought it would be very cool for people to see, you know, the bear footprints and stuff like that inside the cave. We're gonna go check out this backpacker camp. So anyway, one day he, uh, he locked the bear up in there and kind of forgot about the bear. And he, uh, oh, hello. Caterpillar. 
he forgot about the bear. And so we led this tour group back into uh, into the cave and they came across this bear. And it kind of freaked him out. And uh, you know, the bear was in front of him. They didn't have electric lights back then. So the, uh, the bear kept moving further away from him and further away from him. And eventually it got to a corner and it couldn't go anywhere. And uh, the bear charged him, the whole tour group. Bear kind of got freaked out started charging this one lady in the story that I read she freaked out so much that she peed herself and that Eddie had to go and quickly grab her and pull her out of the way so the bear could get through because the bear wanted you know out obviously so interesting story about Fisher Cave I probably won't go in today because as I mentioned earlier, I've got other places to go. All right, so this is one of the backpacking camps. There's two very close proximity. The trail was kind of hard to see. So this might be the second one actually. I don't know, but a little bit of a slope for sure. Your best uh, tent spot is probably up right about here because it all slopes downhill. But you got some good hammock locations and a fire pit in the middle. So, but after that point, old Eddie never locked the uh, the bears up in Fisher Cave again. And the uh, it almost looks like there's a trail that heads back that direction. Huh. Well, we're gonna go back to the main trail. But they uh, they didn't try to keep the bears anymore, you know, in the caves after that. There's not really a whole lot of markings here. Kind of guessing this is the trail, but uh, you know that's probably just a washout. So. Use caution when coming to find this backpacking camp, that's for sure. Mm -hmm.